Class of 2021, please be seated. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Indian Hill High School Baccalaureate Ceremony for the Class of 2021. I would like to start off by thanking the incredible staff we have here at Indian Hill, to our beloved teachers and administrators. We wouldn't be here in this moment without you. I would like to thank Mrs. Cushman, who just over a month ago reached out to me with the amazing news that Indian Hills Baccalaureate tradition could safely return this May. It is thanks to her hard work that this last minute decision and frenzy to plan has brought us here to enjoy this occasion. 
Lastly, thank you to each and every one special two guests that are here with us tonight, and to all of those who are watching from home. The theme of tonight's ceremony is time in a bottle. Four years ago, I remember standing in this exact gym, waiting to enter the auditorium for our middle school graduation. Well, at that time, our biggest concerns were, which girl or guy am I gonna have to walk across the stage with? Or am I wearing the white, same white dress as someone else? It didn't take long for a greater fear to sink in. What will high school be like? Who am I going to become in these next four years? Where will my journey lead me? Four years ago, I can guarantee you that not many of us could have predicted wearing these, or logging into school from our bedrooms, or having terms like social distancing and unprecedented become the accepted norm of every small talk conversation. But here we are. One year ago, we were highly oblivious to the chaos that would become known as probably one of the most unconventional senior years in modern history. From canceled senior trips, to virtual competitions and performances, to the looming dread of cicada season, senior year hasn't quite lived up to the movies. Still, we will not let these trials and tribulations define our high school experience. Here in this audience tonight, we have artists, athletes, performers, musicians, thinkers, leaders, and learners who, in spite of the challenges present throughout their high school careers, have persisted and perfected their crafts. As I was rummaging through my closet the other day, I happened to find our class of 2021 picture that was taken exactly four years ago on these exact bleachers. Granted, our high school years have gifted us a few new faces along the way, and for the guys, a few extra feet in height, but in some ways, we may still feel like those uncertain kids about to embark on the next stage of our lives. What's different now are the insights, perspectives, and lessons we've gained from the personal experiences, challenges, and adventures we've faced these past four years. And wow, did it go by fast. So with that, please enjoy tonight and the outstanding acts that follow. Congratulations, class of 2021.
broken wings and learn to fly all your life. You were only waiting for this moment to arise. Blackbirds singing in the dead of night. Take these sunken eyes and learn to see all your life. You were only waiting for this moment to be free. Blackbird fly, blackbird fly into the night of a dark black night. broken wings and learn to fly all your life you were only waiting for this moment to arise yes you were only waiting for this moment to arise yes you were only waiting for this moment to arise tiptoes 
We could peek over the sill And once in a while we would see a girl Slowly walking up the hill And we'd think what a sad situation To be outside on your own To go through the town with no playmate To go through life all alone I, I will never leave you I will never go away We were meant to share each moment Beside you is where I will stay Evermore and always We'll be one though we're two For I will never leave you When the day is filled with shadows That stretch into the night I am filled with your sweet comfort Like a morning fills with light I will never leave you I will never go away We were meant to share each moment Beside you is where I will stay Evermore and always We'll be one though we're two For I will never leave you No, I will never leave you I will never leave you I will never go away We were meant to share each moment Beside you is where I will stay Evermore and always Evermore. We'll be one though we're two One though we're two For I will never I will never I will never Leave you Good evening. Thank you so much for asking me to speak at this ceremony. It's truly such an honor, and it's so wonderful to see all of you, especially after a year where it felt like we didn't really get a goodbye. When I was first asked to give this speech, I had a moment of anxiety. Not about giving the speech, because after all, I am the high school speech teacher. No, I was nervous, because delivering this speech is usually a ceremony that's held at Armstrong Chapel. Last time I stood at the front of that beautiful sanctuary was to deliver a eulogy for my dear friend, Adam Clapp. He passed away when he was just a few years older than most of you. I wasn't sure what it would feel like to stand up where I had stood to celebrate the end of a life and help you celebrate a new beginning. And even though we aren't assembled in that place today, the echoes of that parallel moment still ring through my mind. In the end, a eulogy and a graduation are not so very different. In a eulogy, you mark the end of a life. You celebrate the moments of joy, and you search for meaning to take with you. A graduation is an ending and a beginning as well. They're both times to pause and ask questions. What impact did my loved one leave behind? What impact will I make on the world? What should we do with the short time that we've been given? I think sometimes such big questions can feel paralyzing, but I've learned to love those questions for the open possibilities they hold. When I first started teaching, I was really nervous that I wouldn't have all the answers, especially if someone asked me how to spell something. But after I settled into my job, I decided that perhaps it was simply my job to have the right questions. So, as your teacher, I thought I'd offer a, a few questions for today's Socratic seminar. I hope you've all brought your annotated text with you. I think one of the questions that rules our lives is, what do you want to be when you grow up? What do you want to do? And it's generally asked as if the answer is one word a teacher, a lawyer, a doctor. 
My friend Adam died before he got to live out the answer to that question, and if this past year has taught me anything, it's that our answer cannot be the end of the story. We are multi-passionate people, and we should live our lives that way. Not a single one of you is one thing. And as Adichie warned, beware of the single story, because just as stereotypes we hold of others can keep us from seeing their full humanity, a single story you tell yourself about your life can be just as dangerous. You, my friends, are more than a single story. And yet the world will try to demand one of you at every cocktail party and high school re reunion when someone asks, so what do you do? In the same way that we discussed breaking out of the prescribed writing formula, I encourage you to break out of the structure that that question tries to impose. You could be a teacher, a mother who used to be an actor, who still takes cello lessons and is seriously considering taking up rock climbing sometime in the next year. You could be a veteran history teacher, husband, father, aspiring historical fiction writer who, intriguingly, owns a restaurant in New Orleans called Bacchanal. I'm not sure who that guy is, but he sounds pretty cool. I hope you all find professions that you are passionate about, but I hope you all remember that you are not your job. You are not the cocktail party answer to the question, so what do you do? As a matter of fact, if I could make one request, it would be that we don't ask each other that question ever again. Let's search for a better question. How about what excites you? What are you working on? What got you out of bed this morning? What if when we asked what do you do, we weren't looking for the one word answers. We were instead really asking what do you do? What fills your life? Who fills you up? I think the answers might require some new thinking and maybe even some new verbs. For example, I mommed a lot today. Sometimes I think when I'm teaching, I'm really momming. Isaac Ashimov said, people think of education as something that they can finish. And what's more, when they finish, it's a rite of passage. You're finished with school. You're no more a child, and therefore anything that reminds you of school, reading books, having ideas, asking questions, that's kid stuff. Now you're an adult, you don't do that sort of thing anymore. All respect to Mr. Ashmov, but I am hopeful that that quote will not apply to this class. Because if there's one thing that I will remember about all of you, it's that you were not afraid to ask real questions. Mrs. Sayre, why do we have to read this? Mrs. Sayre, why are we learning this? Mrs. Sayre, why are we talking about this again? We laugh and I think that many times we shrug those questions off and roll our eyes at the people who dare to ask them, but they are challenging and important. It's the why questions that have the power to create change because if the answer is, I don't know, it forces us to stop and reassess. Let's all take a moment to appreciate what an exciting answer I don't know is because it means that we get to figure it out. So, on the eve of your graduation, when we are celebrating an end and a beginning, in one of my last moments as your teacher, let me be the first to ask you some big, exciting questions. What do you wanna learn next? What excites you? What don't you know? What's your next big question? After getting to know so many of you, I'm sure of one thing. I absolutely cannot wait to hear your answers. Thank you. Sometimes life's okay I ran my mouth off a bit Too much of what did I say When you just left it off It was all okay Okay, and we'll all float on. 
Just to learn some sleight of hand Bad news comes, don't you worry Even when it lands Good news will work its way to all them plans We both got fired on exactly the same day Well, we'll float on, good news is on the way And it's crazy to think that tomorrow we will officially be graduates of Indian Hill High School. Our journey as the class of 2021 has certainly been one to remember with many important milestones and memories made along the way. As a grade, we have overcome many obstacles but have been resilient and found ways to enjoy the journey. We've adapted to the many changes of our junior and senior years as a result of the global pandemic and even while we may not have gotten to experience many of the seniors traditions we had been looking forward to, we have definitely shared many moments together. Each step we took was an adventure on its own. So as this journey comes to an end, we would like to take a few moments to reflect back on our four years together as the class of 2021. Our freshman year, we all witnessed the rare solar eclipse holding outside as we watched it happen together. Later that year, our grade won the powder puff in the first year that they let freshmen participate. We had lots of fun at our first and only outdoor music fest, and just like that, our first year of high school was over. In our sophomore year, 
we all came together through Redo Day, which forced us to let our vulnerabilities to our peers. It was definitely hard, but it made us stronger and closer than ever before. We all continued through our respective academic and athletic activities, and just a few more short months later, we were halfway done with high school. Then everything changed our junior year. That was the year of taking SATs and ACTs multiple times. It was junior day, and I remember when Amithesh and Josh tipped into the lake, wading back to shore with wet clothes. This was yet another memory through our journey. Our perseverance was again tested in March, but on the infamous Friday the 13th, our school was closed for what seemed like forever. Still, we met over Zoom, hosted parties online, and even took AP exams online that would eventually seal our fate to college. Even then, we didn't let the distance stop us. Whether it was attending virtual graduations or weddings, or driving past friends' house for birthdays, we proved that our friendships and relationships were stronger than the pandemic. And now, we're seniors. In just 24 hours, we're gonna be the alumni of Indian Hill High School. I know that going into senior year, we look forward to, see, to senior traditions, such as senior trip. But even when that was impossible, we had senior breakfast, received senior merch, and by the grace of the vaccine, even attended our first prom. It seems crazy that just four years ago, we walked into the school not knowing what the journey would look like. Each year, we overcame obstacles and grew closer to each other, the strongest testament being the pandemic we're currently in. What distinguishes Indian Hill from the other schools is the unique feeling of a family. We've all been there for each other. We've overcome battles together and laughed together. Whether you've been here for 13 years, moved here in middle school, or just came last year, Indian Hill will always be our family, no matter where our next steps take us. So although in a few months, we are all going to leave to go our separate ways, we are and always will be the Braves. Congratulations, class of 2021.
years ago, I came into the Indian Hill parking lot for the first time as a student. It was for Bridges, and I remember being so terrified. After a pretty rough time at my old school, I didn't know what kind of community I would find here. I actually made my mom loop around the parking lot like four or five or six times before I finally had enough courage to just get out of the car after her forcing me to have courage to get out of the car. And, you know, little did I know what I would find when I walked through these doors. As much as I wish I could have been with you all longer, I cannot claim the honor of being a 13-year club member. Uh, my experience has been limited exclusively to the high school, and it has truly been a transformative four years. I don't think I would be the person uh, I am today or be going the places I would be going without the contributions from every teacher, every student, every administrator, and every community member here at Indian Hill. And so I just want to use this speech just to quickly thank each and every one of you for your role in my life over the past few uh, four years. Together, we have done some incredible things. We've won state championships, national championships, international awards, volunteered hundreds of service hours, founded clubs, worked in nonprofits, circle walked with Mr. Kirk, complained about Ethan Frome to Ms. Coltis or Mr. Daniel, screwed up lab notebooks in Mrs. Savage's class, get yelled at by Mrs. Savage for screwing up lab notebooks in Mrs. Savage's class, and so much more. And you know, whether we all are best friends and love each other or not, or whether we're really ready to get out of here soon, we have all had some impact on each other. And so I hope tonight we can celebrate that impact for better or for worse. You know, I think with these moments like this, we talk about them, we think about them, and sometimes they don't feel as great as we think they're going to. They're not these magical things that we see on movies. And at the end of the day, we only have so many of them. And so I would encourage everyone you know, to, to really just try and savor this moment, whether it's all you imagined it to be, because it really is one of our last moments together. Um, and, and I just hope that we can take the time to enjoy it and enjoy tomorrow. I have loved being a part of the class of 2021, and I'm incredibly honored to get to graduate with you tomorrow or Saturday or some point, whenever they let us. Um, it's going to be fun. And just thank you all. I love you all so much and congratulations. Yeah, nobody told me I was going to have to follow Ethan. Uh, I kind of feel like I've been lied to. It's all right. I also feel like I should take off my coat so I can look like a 
Zender Sender, but. Exactly 13 years ago tonight, I signed the papers on a divorce that I neither wanted nor expected. And I proceeded to go through a very dark time in my life. To say that my personal life was a sad and shallow cliche for a midlife crisis would be an understatement. But exactly four years later, on this very night at Indian Hills 2012 Baccalaureate, I found myself seated next to the most interesting and intelligent and beautiful woman I'd ever met. And I just knew that my whole life was about to change. And did it ever. In one calendar year, she introduced me to a vision and version of God that was far different from the fire and brimstone fairy tales on which I'd been raised. She took me on my first mission trip. She taught me that being kind doesn't necessarily mean being weak. She baptized me and she showed me that maybe, just maybe, there's more to life than Duke basketball and Indian Hill mock trial. I'm still working on that one, Amy. Fast forward eight years, and she and I are happily married, and we are raising one of the kindest, sweetest, most wonderful boys on the planet, and our other son, Caleb. <laughs> Thank you. So what's my point? If I have one, it's this. She taught me the power of one. It's amazing what one person can do. One person can literally change the entire world or change the world entirely for someone else, like Amy did for me. One person. One person who has extraordinary gifts like Megan O'Brien's athleticism, John Cushman's stage presence, Ethan Marks's courtroom presence, Faye Hardick's insight and creativity, Nick Ringer's sense of humor, Sidney Poffenberger's sense of style. Not everyone can rock black tennis shoes with a prom dress. I tried, it didn't work. <laughs> Julian Lambert's writing, Amitesh Verma's leadership, Riley Grace's singing voice, Annie Hove's musicianship, Jenna Bennett's personality, Will Kleekamp's contagious smile, or Jenny Zhang's equally contagious laugh, Lauren Sewell's ambition, and relentless drive, Lauren Fry's enthusiasm for, well, hell, anything, Vondita Rostogi's sense of service and civic responsibility, Luke Castellini's kindness and character, Brooke Youngblood's integrity and faith, or Maya Anderson's all of the above. If you still doubt the power of one, imagine for just a moment the state of race relations in this country without one Rosa Parks. The state of medicine without one Jonas Salk. Or closer to home, imagine Indian Hill High School these past four years without Audrey Bristol's consistent punctuality. Coleman Worstler's ability to resist the temptation of flirting. <laughs> Zach Sullivan's impeccable attendance on test days. <laughs> Luke Robinson's seriousness in all situations and occasions. Charlotte McNair's driving ability. <laughs> Will Ford's extremely large and easy to read handwriting. <laughs> 
Baptistine's steadfast desire to steer far clear of anything resembling gossip. Harris Foed's ambitious desire to get things done well in advance of a deadline. Bridget Schumacher's quiet, reserved, almost shy presence in the hallways. Will Church's dedicated service to the ACLU and other liberal causes. <laughs> Gabe Yin's stunning willpower, which enables him to avoid texting for entire seconds at a time. Or Ridge DeMullen's similar ability to stay awake in class for periods of up to six minutes. And Graham Pierce. There's no joke there, just Graham Pierce. <laughs> and I guess that's what the power of one is all about. It's about one person moving on to the next phase of life's journey and another person stepping up to fill the vacated void. And I suppose that's the way it's always been. Our history has always been a tale of next man up. One generation defeats fascism, the next communism. One generation survives polio, the next survives disco. One generation splits the atom, the next splices the gene. Which leads me to wonder, what's left for you to conquer? What's out there that will challenge you, that will make you go farther and work harder? I don't know. And the fact of the matter is neither do you. But I do know this, you're up. Spoiler alert, it's your time now. The 166 of you are heading off to places as near and dear to us as Miami, UC, Xavier, and to places as far away and scary as UVA, UNC, and the military. And you're going to be confronted with challenges, obstacles, and change. Some of you are ready, some of you aren't. But ready or not, you're in the batter's box now, baby. More than at any time in our nation's history, America's destiny is not of her own choosing. And we are challenged with securing peace in a time of global conflict and sustaining hope in a time of anxiety and fear. We did not invite terrorists to wage war on us. We did not anticipate hard economic times, nor plan for the ensuing racial discord. And we certainly didn't expect the coronavirus, but the measure of a person isn't that person's ability to avoid crisis and conflict. Rather, it's his or her ability to master that moment when confrontation does inevitably arise. So what challenges and confrontations are out there waiting for the 166 of you? Will Jenny Zhang discover a cure for Alzheimer's? Will Sarah Matawi devise a plan for lasting peace in the Middle East? Will Connor Gallagher play jazz for Jesus on a djembe? Will one of you, for the love of God, please invent a chemical that will cure male pattern baldness? In short, will the 166 of you do what is hard and achieve what is great? I don't know, but either way, don't be afraid of the obstacles in front of you. Don't shy away from challenges. Embrace them. Embrace the power of one. If our nation's history has taught us anything, it's that we as Americans are uniquely suited for handling and mastering change. Our entire history is one of ordinary people rising up to do extraordinary things. And now it's your time and your time and your time. I, for one, can't wait to see what you do with it. Good luck, may God bless you, and as always, 
Stay classy, Indian Hill. Hey, Mr. Tambourine Man, play a song for me. I'm not sleepy, and there is no place I'm going to. Hey, Mr. Tambourine Man, play a song for me. In the jingle jangle morning, I'll come following you. Though I know that evening's empire has returned into sand, vanished from my hand, left me blindly here to stand, but still not sleeping. My weariness amazes me, I'm branded on my feet. I have no one to meet. Wait only for my boot heels to be wondering. Hey, Mr. Tambourine Man, play a song for me. I'm not sleepy and there is no place I'm going to. Hey, Mr. Tambourine Man, play a song for me. In the jingle jangle morning, I'll come following you. Take me on a trip upon your magic swirling ship. My senses have been stripped, my toes too numb to step. Wait only for my boot heels to be wandering. I'm ready to go anywhere, I'm ready for to fade. And to my own parade, cast your dancing spells my way. I promise to go under it. Mr. Tambourine Man, play a song for me. I'm not sleepy and there is no place I'm going to. Hey, Mr. Tambourine Man, play a song for me. In the jingle jangle morning, I'll come following you. Take me disappearing through the smoke rings of my mind with your tambourine in time. Far past the frozen leaves, the haunted, frightened trees, brought to the windy beach of crazy sorrow. Yes, to dance beneath the diamond sky with one hand waving free, silhouetted by the sea, circled by the circus signs, with all memory and fate driven deep beneath the waves. Let me forget about today until tomorrow. Hey, Mr. Tambourine Man, play a song for me. I'm not sleepy, and there is no place I'm going to.
Thank you again to all who have joined us this evening, both in person and virtually, to celebrate the accomplishments of our seniors. Thank you to all of our performers and speakers for sharing your talents and voices. To the class of 2021, I'm grateful to have grown alongside you all these past four years. While our senior year may have turned out far from what we ever imagined, I think we can all agree that this time together will always hold a unique spot in our hearts, minds, and I guess our bottles or whatever that means. At this time, will the class of 2021 please rise? Feel boy, baby, do a leap and make them dance when it come on. Everybody looking for a dance floor to run on. If you wanna run away with me, I know a galaxy and I can take you for a ride. I had a premonition that we fell into a rhythm where the music don't stop. One of the greatest, ain't no debating on it. I'm still levitated, I'm heavily medicated. Ironic, I gave him love and they end up hating on me. She told me she loved me and she been waiting. I see myself in med school, uh, tail end of it. And I see myself with a wife and uh, about to start a family. And yeah, that's about it. I'm Lauren Yamaguchi. In 10 years, I hope to be working for like a good business firm and hopefully like have a family because I'll be like 28 by then. I don't know, I guess in 10 years I might be a famous streamer or YouTuber or something like that. Um, in 10 years I hope to be working and hopefully have a family or be, be married and eventually starting a family. Uh, alive, hopefully, with a college degree. Don't want to wear the mask 10 years from now. Uh, hopefully have a steady job and a house. Hi, my name is Andrew Sandley. In 10 years, I see myself working as an airline pilot for Delta. Hi, I'm Jake Fox. Um, in 10 years, I probably see myself uh, potentially with a family and a wife, um, probably in our first home and probably like a suburbs. Hi, I'm Lauren Fry, and in 10 years, I see myself having a family, um, living in a house, working, and um, traveling, having fun, yeah. Hi, I'm Dan Edmondson, and in 10 years I see myself in dental school. Um, my name is Joey Santati, and um, in 10 years I see myself working as a neurologist in New York City. Hi, my name is Adam Diefendeifer. Uh, in 10 years, I see myself being an operations manager in the business um, world and just being an upper management. Hi, my name is Vanda Thurstogi, and I see myself being a geriatric neurologist. Hi, my name is Andrew Miller, and I see myself um, graduating from college, starting a family, and being somewhere high up in the business world. I plan on graduating college and getting a job. I'm Robert Brunner, and in 10 years, I'd like to graduate college and start working in an engineering field. I'm Jenna Bennett and I plan on graduating college and going into the chemical engineering field. My name is Olivia and in 10 years I think I see myself out of college. I hope to be working in conservation, maybe married. Hi, I'm Nathan Berger and I see myself in 10 years working in a business field and also graduating college. Hi, I'm Simon Lococo and I find myself in five years a uh, graduating college and getting a job. Probably just traveling and hopefully have a job in the fashion industry. I'm Will. In 10 years, I hope to see myself either as a sports broadcaster for some basketball team or as a politician. Um, I'm Sophie Megan, and I could see myself uh, going to, I guess, maybe like work somewhere. I don't know where specifically. So I'm Amanda, and where I see myself in 10 years is being a businesswoman. Hi, I'm Maria Lindbergh, and in 10 years, I would see myself um, with a job after graduating college. Hi, my name is Jessica Lau, and I, in 10 years, I see myself working at a food manufacturing um, company. Uh, in 10 years, I'm probably going to be in the mountains in my mountain home, 
uh, I'm gonna be planting some plants, just having a good time, uh, looking at birds maybe, you know. I'm Will Hader and I kind of see myself graduated from college in the real world with a real job. Hi, I'm Brooke. Um, I, in 10 years, I see myself graduating college, being a teacher somewhere, maybe living in New York or Tennessee or Ohio. Hopefully I'm married and like have a kid. That would be fun. Um, I'm Max Yanez, and I, in 10 years, I see myself bringing my dog to work on a Friday. I'm Ben, and I see myself being a entrepreneur, owning a company. I'm Warren, and in 10 years, I see myself having fun. I'm Alex Shager, and I'll be retired. I'm Sydney, and in 10 years, I hope I'm traveling. In 10 years, I see myself working in a hospital, um, as either a travel nurse, an OB nurse, or a peds nurse. In, uh, in 10 years, I see myself um, with a nice uh, business job and starting uh, hopefully a good family. Um, that's about it. Um, Sarah Strafak, and I think I'm going to major in forensic science in 10 years. Jaden James, um, where I see myself, I don't know actually. Um, maybe as a psychologist. Maybe. I don't know yet. Uh, my name is Dylan, and in 10 years, I see myself probably living in Nebraska. Hello, my name is Ben Miller, and I see myself in 10 years living somewhere out in Colorado, working on a big mountain uh, as a ski patrol person or like helping the mountain like work. Uh, I don't know. Uh, work smoothly. There we go. In 10 years, I see myself living on a ranch in Oklahoma, raising a ginormous family of kangaroos. In 10 years, I see myself also in Oklahoma on a ranch with Dougie, helping him raise his kangaroos. My name is Julian Lambert, and in 10 years, I'd see myself helping out with the video industry or movie production or anything along those lines, similar to with Braves B, in any way that I can. Um, in 10 years, I hopefully see myself being a PA. In 10 years, I hopefully have a good job and I'm happy and have a lot of friends. Okay, so I think that in 10 years, I see myself um, with like a pretty good job, but mainly with like, um, but mainly with like a family and just like a couple kids and then just like, um, just like a loving family that I can come home to every day from work. So in 10 years, hopefully I'll be graduated from the University of Illinois. Um, I think grad school is in the, is in the plan and I just hope that I'm happy and have a lot of love in my life. Um, hopefully I'm uh, married at that point and uh, I've got a stable job. And I graduated college and, yeah, just living life. Hi, I'm Travis Kenny, and I guess in 10 years from now, I'm hoping that I'm not homeless, so I guess I'll just be working a job, potentially. Okay, um, where do I see myself in 10 years? I'm not really sure. I'm probably going to be working, but I'm hoping that I'm happy doing whatever I'm doing. I'm Grace Galloway, and in 10 years, I'll hopefully have like a stable job and be happy with what I'm doing in life. I see myself probably uh, in an apartment, working my butt off to try and get what I want in life. Hello, I'm Kevin Lewis, and in 10 years, I see myself graduated and with a nice family. Uh, hopefully, you know, graduate from college, have a family, you know, good living. Ten years is far, far away. I don't, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> I don't. Uh, what's the question again? Uh, ten years. I don't know. Probably at a job. Job, yeah. house, house. Yeah. Family. And a little early for family. Dude. Maybe wife. Well, oh, that's true. That's Maybe true. wife, kids in a few years though. But job for sure. In 10 years, I, I see myself in South Africa playing with lions and tigers. Okay, um, I'll be 27, so I guess working um, out of college, hopefully living somewhere warm. Working for a marketing agency in Chicago. Probably with a job somewhere, maybe with kids, I don't know. My name is Jameis Sturzo, and I see myself as an executive in 10 years.
I'm Fahim Hussain, and I see myself in grad school in 10 years. I'm, I'm Armand Mazad. Um, I see myself in grad school in 10 years. So in 10 years, um, I see myself with like a job and a family and probably kids and yeah. All right, uh, my name is Nick Woods and I can see myself in 10 years either at grad school or working in the biomedical engineering field. Okay, um, in 10 years I see myself with a job in the marketing field. I'm going to graduate college and hopefully find a really good job. Okay, in 10 years I see myself hopefully graduated from medical school and practicing as a pediatrician in a hospital. In 10 years, I hope to have graduated from Ohio State um, and to be practicing as an economist. All right, in 10 years, I see myself hopefully graduating from Denver U University and being a, a player in politics and helping people um, find their way through life. Um, in 10 years, I see myself hopefully being a chemical engineer, having graduated from Ohio State, hopefully have a dog. I want to St. Bernard. Um, I see myself as a teacher in 10 years, hopefully here, because that would be really nice. I would probably see myself doing some sort of engineering job in 10 years in the aerospace engineering industry, but other than that, I really don't know. Okay, in 10 years, I see myself probably out of law school, hopefully, um, maybe working in like a prosecutor's office or working um, in like public service type work um, and trying to like help people the best I can and, and fight for justice and stuff. My name is Alan Choi and I see myself in, still studying in 10 years. Uh, where do I see myself in 10 years? Uh, that's kind of a tough question. Uh, I honestly don't know. I'll probably be out of college, either in med school or working. So I think that's where I'll be in 10 years. Uh, I'm Joey Alsbach. Uh, where I see myself in 10 years? Uh, as a chemical engineer, not totally sure where, but hope to have a pretty decent car, possibly a home, at least dating. I don't know. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I'd say pretty typical stuff, so. Uh, my name is Jasper Bennett, um, and where I see myself in 10 years is um, to be decided. Okay, hi, my name is Riley Grace. Um, I'm not honestly sure where I see myself in 10 years. Um, I'm really hoping to keep performing and to keep being involved in the arts and to just, I don't know, live life the best way it can be. <laughs> Hi, I'm Olivia Vigran, and in 10 years, I see myself working in some kind of health industry. Hi, I'm Faye Hardeck, and in 10 years, I hope to see myself in some sort of medical profession, hopefully pediatric surgery. Hi, my name's Kate Taylor, and where I see myself in 10 years is graduating from college and hopefully having a marketing job somewhere in a big city. Hi, my name is Amitish Verma, and I hope to, um, in 10 years, be in the healthcare field. Okay, um, my name is Katya Christo, and in 10 years, I hope to have a job that has to do with psychology. Hi, my name is Cam, and in 10 years, I hope to have graduated from college and have a job that has something to do with international business. Uh, in 10 years, I probably see myself uh, working a job uh, and maybe uh, having a pet cactus. Um, I'm not really sure where I see myself in 10 years. Um, but hopefully it's doing something within the entertainment business, whatever that looks like. But yeah, I'm not sure. I'll just see where stuff takes me. My name is Natalie. I'm a senior. And in 10 years, I see myself probably living in a box on the side of the street. I'm Joe James. And in 10 years, I see myself definitely married. Hopefully I'm rich or the person I marry is rich, something. And with kids. Hello, I'm Kennedy Green, and in 10 years, I hope to be married with a house and maybe a kid or two. Hi, my name is Annie Schumann, and in 10 years, I'll be applying for a new passport because all of my pages will be stamped from seeing the world and meeting new people. I guess in 10 years, um, it'll be like my sixth year on my own out of college. So. I guess I see myself with um, a pretty good job at that point, pretty settled down on where I'm living. Uh, who knows, maybe I've got a family or something. That'd be pretty cool. Um, yeah. My name is Caroline Cassidy, and in 10 years, I see myself working as a graphic designer in some company and hopefully becoming a creative director. 
I'm Caroline Gady, and in 10 years I'll be 27, so I hope to maybe have my master's or doctorate degree by then, and I guess have a stable job and be on my career path. I'm Danny, and in 10 years I see myself with a job living in a big city. I'm Graham Pierce, and in 10 years I see myself doing archive work at a museum. Hello, uh, my name is Jenny Zhang, and in 10 years, hopefully I'll be out of college and in the workforce. I'm hoping to travel a bit, but um, I think I'll be in a good place. Uh, my name is Jessica August, and in 10 years, I see myself um, doing something that I love, I guess, my dream job. And I mean, obviously, I don't know what I want to do yet, so doing something that whatever makes me happy. Hi, my name is Jesse, and in 10 years, I just hope to have a job to hopefully have graduated college and be out of med school. My name is Kennedy Frost, and in 10 years, I would like to be a primary school teacher in Japan in a two-bedroom apartment, paying rent, and surviving. That is all. Hi, my name is Maya, and in 10 years, I hope to be adventuring around the world as part of a documentary film crew, uh, gaining experience and learning as much as I can so that I can lead film projects of my own someday. In 10 years, I see myself hosting a Star Wars reunion show after starring in a remake of Clone Wars live action with my co-stars Danny Forte and Bowie Irvine as Jabba the Hutt and Jar Jar Binks. Exclusive coverage on the Indian Hill Television Network has been a copyrighted presentation of the Indian Hill High School Video Department.